Our next speaker is Emmanuel Adeguer. Emmanuel Adeguer is also a good friend of mine and works for a television channel, a large television group called Trust TV. And he will explain us how he built a um, transcoding platform based on open source software. Hi, everyone. So, uh, as Christophe just said, I work for Trust TV. So, it's a group of uh, channels. As you may see here, we have like various TV channels about music, like different kinds of music we specify for the different regions in Africa. But we have two sports channels, we have uh, now a, a radio offer, and all this is based uh, in Paris. It is a total of uh, 24 uh, streams now. And uh, so this uh, presentation is an emphasis on, um, on the transcoding really light platform we did. So basically it's just a combination of like tools you probably know, of course, uh, FFmpeg, etc. But I really want to, to put the emphasis on uh, the interface itself and why we, <coughs> why we really needed to focus on that. So it all started with uh, that project named uh, Trace Central, which was dedicated first for production teams. So it's all jQuery, like I use this uh, bootstrap theme named United to do like all these little dynamic boxes, etc., and lights. The idea there was that like all was done on paper, like until like uh, <coughs> recently, and like people will like just uh, enter the stuff. There will be like some uh, checkings on uh, capital letters, etc. If they use a, a type, etc., just to normalize it with green light, red light, etc. And then we pushed that to uh, to the transcoding uh, to the transcoding uh, world. So basically, uh, this is just a web server. This will uh, uh, call uh, Python scripts to run a FFmpeg task. Uh, at the very first, uh, the, the tasks were really, really simple one, just conversion HD to SD, etc. Then we had to modify the, the sum and bring it to zero in our MXFs. Uh, and then it, it be, like, we had to do like <coughs> audio mappings because all our different channels like will have like bilingual, French, English, or just English, or Spanish, whatever. And like there was all many, many combination of audio mapping. But the point is that even if my team, like the technical team, could do uh, it by itself, like uh, just using FFmpeg normally with the, the, the lines, most of the users now are almost everyone in the company. Like everyone, either the graphic designer or uh, the, the schedulers, uh, whoever, like who, even people working in marketing and have no knowledge at all of video, needs to transcode by themselves video to uh, make it more efficient. So that's why we, we started like to do stuff that will detect if there are like many various source of the same files, like what will be the highest uh, resolution available, like uh, uh, full HD, uh, uh, HD ready, whatever. And, um, and then like people like told me like, I just don't understand what is HD and I don't want to understand what is HD. <laughs> so then I, I just went with old system with green light, red light, it's good quality, bad quality. It's really funny to say that, but this was a real need in our, in our company because people who didn't want to get involved with techniques needed to transcode video by themselves because if they had to ask to my service all the time, Emmanuel, we need to transcode this or that, it would take so much more time than if they do it by themselves. And then when we opened, opened that uh, Pandora box, of course everyone used it and uh, in a various way that were out of control. <laughs> and, uh, and then we had to, uh, to combine it with a, a really simple, so at first it was a MongoDB uh, <laughs> database, but now, now we just switched to SQL. We just had to have a tracking of like how many, how many video were, were transcoded. And as you could, see, sorry, the definition is really bad, but like as you can see, there were still thousands of video, were, uh, sorry, like many videos were, hundreds of video were like uh, HD ready when I want basically to have all of them in full HD. So that was a way for me to track that people were still not understand, to understanding how to use the software and I had to make it even more simple to reach my goal, which were like 100% full HD videos. Uh, then um, then uh, what's next? So what we want to do next is uh, to, to make it faster to duplicate our servers and to share it back with the community. So we just created a, a really simple, simple GitHub uh, first for uh, backup uh, purposes and, uh, and uh, make it m way more easy to, to duplicate. Um, we added a, a parser, so this one was done in Node.js with like this package, so uh, all are well known, but like most of our producers, they deliver uh, the, the metadata as various 
various way various way to do it like XLSX but like CSV and then they will do like non-standard CSV like they always think it's funny to customize it and replace the the punctuation by like percent or whatever so each time like you have to modify the parser it's kind of fun and uh, so the idea was to integrate like all the metadata as uh, in a bundle and auto zip it and then move it from from storage to one to the other to one and another uh, then uh, what is uh, what I want, what I want to, to modify right now is that all the, fold, the network folder paths are, are hard-coded now. And uh, before sharing it, of course, we would like just to have a page and, be, and the people be able to enter the, the, the network folder that they will want to use because this software is, is a way to, to, um, to redistribute the videos after transcoded to, to either ready to broadcast, so directly to the playout station, or sometimes for uh, uh, advisory reason, we need to blur like whatever, like alcohol, cigarettes, uh, <coughs> um, bikes, whatever. We need to do a lot of blurring. And there are different services, production services at Trace, that would do only this task. So it will be rerouted from here to there, whatever. And all this is, is, um, is under control by the software. Uh, so as soon as, uh, as this will be done, I think we'll be able to share it because then it won't be just uh, internal software dedicated for Trace, but it could, it could be like really easy for people to, to have this web server all in place uh, and use it. So of course, when, uh, when we created that software, uh, what I had in mind was uh, this uh, commercial software named uh, Carbon Coder by Harmonic, and they have like their farm uh, named uh, um, WFS. So of course, it's, uh, it's, way, it's far from this product, which is way more advanced than my, uh, my transcoding platform, of course, but it is an open source, and I think easy, it's way easier to modify, uh, to, to modify the, these two units. So I think I went kind of fast, because uh, that was... Uh, <laughs> so I don't know if you guys uh, have any questions, or if you want some more details on like, our production uh, workflows or whatever. We've got plenty of time for questions. Yes, I'm sorry. Yes. Right. No, they they don't like. Uh, so yes, I will re the question was like, do uh, do the producer provide like correct MXF to directly? And the answer, of course, is no. Uh, we have uh, 20 production centers in the world, and of course, they will even though since. In eight years, I'm trying to say, please provide me MXF XDCAM, they can do it still. So I have always a, var a variety of formats which are really badly done. M the biggest problem I have is like they never respect the, the, the frame rate. Like I will have like, they will invent frame rates, which right. is kind of funny, like because they think it is when you have to enter the, the frame rate, like they think it's asked to them, enter the number you want, and they will put like 11, so we have to <laughs> get it back, or they will do two, 22 FPS or. I don't know, like whatever various format, and it's too late because what you have to know is that most of the videos produced, for example, in Nigeria, Nigeria is a huge uh, production uh, city. They have like, like you may have heard of Bollywood, they have Nollywood, like Nigeria, the, 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 the core of production. And like the company pro produce the content, like they will have a six months lifetime and then they close and people do another job. So of course, like you have like this rush in 22 FPS and pff, they deleted everything, and uh, you, you you just have that, and you need to make it like a 25 FPS MXFX they come out of it. So <coughs> this is a lot. We have this very very often. Then much more classical <coughs> is like all the content that come from the US, and then there would be a, there would be 29, 297 FPS, and we have to just bring it back to 25. Uh, but the same like <coughs> thanks to the open source community, we find a way to make it properly, like with like more subtle parameters to have. The lip sync uh, worked perfectly on this uh, modification, frame rate modifications. So now, like, we receive like huge amount of formats. Other questions? <coughs> uh, is it uh, like distributed uh, transcoding? No, for the moment. Uh, oh, sorry. The question was like, is uh, the transcoding distributed, like multi-thread or whatever? No, we, I mean, we're just playing with um, the, the multi-thread parameters in FFmpeg, of course, to, to have all our cores used. But uh, no, it is not uh, like a farm right now. Uh, at the same time, uh, what we try to do is uh, we, have a, um, we have a VMware cluster, and uh, we created really small uh, virtual machines for each transcoding unit. 
because if you split by all the different services, like there will be really small needs. There are, there are a lot of needs on the global, uh, if you look at global, but it's always like little needs transcoding here and there. So we don't need to put like crazy performing servers for, for them. So in a way, it's, it's a distribution that works for Trace, but it's not uh, distributed as you, as you just asked. Yes, Kieran? Uh, a bit of an open-ended question, but yeah. have you looked at how to distribute jobs between, so you have some servers which are very powerful, some medium, some low power. How yeah. do you distribute transcoding jobs between them when you need to do a lot? There's a big thing. Uh, uh, as I said, uh, the question was like, how do I distribute the transcoding if I have like a big jobs to transcode or smaller ones? Uh, for the moment, it's just a, uh, a lot of small ones. And uh, for example, like when we have uh, movies, which is brand new for us because uh, Trey started to do SVOD just last year. So for the first time we have movies where, as I said, we are a music channel, so our programs are never longer than 15 minutes. But then when you, you go on movies, like we, when we have to transcode a long movie, we will always ask, for example, to, to our partners in, uh, in England, we do all the subtitling and voiceover. To, to, to retranscode it because they are doing like the voiceover. So right now we didn't have that need. Yes. So who's your like key internal customer for this kind of job? It's uh, the it's uh, all the, the question was uh, who is uh, the the key customer of this kind of tool inter internally and it will be anyone in the company really because like the idea is um is a tool. The key word for in our company since two years now is like digitalize, digitalize the company, whatever. And they really and first like they were really proud of like our editors being able to shoot and edit, but now they have to shoot, edit, and transcode. And like no, even like marketing people need to transcode themselves the videos. So everyone need to transcode, and that's why we like I went I explained like everyone is using it, and I tried to make this really easy word to understand what they were doing at least kind of properly. Yeah, but the, like, the biggest user. Yeah. The biggest user will be equally uh, equally the editors, of course, for the in the broadcast team. But all the uh, con uh, how do you say that? Like the community managers uh, in, uh, on the digital platforms, on the website, etc. Like they will they will need to take our broadcast content and do like some MPEG4 versions for their website. So it will be equally these two guys. Yes. Can you name some big friends, customers? Oh, we do, uh, you mean uh, uh, we don't? Uh, we use it just internally for the moment. Okay. We don't have customers. My, my goal is to share it now, uh, to, uh, open source, of course, but uh, but we don't. Look <coughs> at, it's just an internal software for the moment. Okay, can you talk some about your competitors? So the competitors of uh, you, you want to know who are the competitors of Trace TV or the competitors of Trace TV? Uh, it will be complicated, like if we talk about digital SVOD, it will be Netflix, even though we are way smaller than them. And, uh, and uh, on the broadcast, it is kind of, we are kind of singular as we are a French international company. We are like in 120 countries, over 30 satellites, and, and we are a small company still. We are 200 people. So I would say we don't have ex exactly the same kind of com competitors. And TV is way bigger than us. Well, it would be the same business idea than MTV, but with like a, a tenth of their of their team. No. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Oh, sorry. We are right. <laughs> yes. No. <laughs> So thanks. No other question. Thank you, Emmanuel. Thanks, everyone. And we have a 15 minute break.